so much of the talk this off season has been about building protecting and taking care of quarterback Lamar Jackson we've seen him get knocked out of the past two seasons he hasn't been able to finish either one due to the offensive line so our hope this offseason was that the Ravens would truly address the offensive line with quality over quantity Eric DaCosta even said it himself he said that's on me y'all boys that's on me that is my fault that's my responsibility I didn't address the offensive line like I should have. Okay, Eric DaCosta, you said that, but how did he follow that up? Well, we saw what happened in free agency. We saw what happened in the draft. But to talk about everything that we've seen thus far, we brought on a special guest. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Same keep it clean, very special guests in the building. Uh, cause all this off season, even during all last season, a lot of complaints, a lot of people's frustration was for the Ravens to build a ball. They need to fortify a security unit around their quarterback, Lamar Jackson, so he can be protected. So I figured, why not bring in the guy who just specializes and loves all the talk about the offensive line, Cole Jackson. Cole, let everybody know where they can find you at on Twitter, your YouTube, what you do on there. Talk to the people. Absolutely. Uh, first off, thank you so much for having me on, man. This is oh, yeah. a great opportunity to talk ball with you. So uh, on Twitter at Cole Jackson FB, um, you'll see film breakdowns, clips, all that good stuff, specializing in O-line, the run game, mm -hmm. uh, all that. And then over on the two guys watching football YouTube channel, I do some film rooms. Um, I have a very exciting uh, episode coming on Wednesday. I'm, I have a one-on-one -on -one with Ravens right guard Kevin Zietler. So that's going to be a very, very exciting episode. Talk ball with him. Talk about his new his new teammates that we're going to get into tonight. So be sure to check that out. Mm, perfect segue to his new teammates. So before we get into what the Ravens did in the draft, how do you feel about what they did in free agency and, and what they didn't do? Because... They, of course, they signed Morgan Moses, but they also, during the season, they had re-signed Patrick McCary, uh, but they also, for now at least, they retained uh, Jawan James. So how do you feel about the Ravens offseason at offensive line before the draft? It was kind of an interesting piece because, you know, last year we learned the big need was at left tackle. Um, you know, Patrick McCary came in and, you know, there, there's some debate around, you know, was he able to do it? Was he not? I personally felt he, he was able to kind of lock down specifically in pass protection at the right tackle spot. Um, there just wasn't games last year where you're like, ah, McCary's killing us out there. Um, and so that was kind of the big thing. I, I you know, the, the need to me was a true swing. We need a guy that if Ronnie can't get back week one, we need a guy that can get in there. And, and I mean, you can see it in Lamar Jackson's game when, Villanueva moved over to left tackle. Lamar got uncomfortable, and rightfully so, because when Villanueva lost, he lost bad, and that hey. resulted in QB hits, extreme pressure, sacks, um, you know, contact that you don't want Lamar Jackson taking. It's that regardless of whether or not he elevates his O-line, he can scramble. You don't want him to scramble. You want him to be able to sit deep in the pocket, feel good, let guys get open, um, all that good stuff. So uh, what I expected was someone to come in to play you know be that backup left tackle option they kind of went a different direction they get they got james they kept james who has been a right tackle throughout his career and they got mark morgan moses who similarly has been a right tackle most of his career he, he does have games in 2020 with the washington football team i guess at the time uh where he did swing over to left tackle so i think theoretically he can do it but and then they you know they, so they kind of solidified right tackle, but, you know, left tackle going into the draft was like, all right, what, what's the plan here? You know, we kind of have McCary penciled in at center one. Uh, we have Stanley hopefully coming back, but if he can't, what's the game plan? Uh, we don't really, is it moving Moses over? Do you trust James Health? So there was a lot of uncertainty with the backup left tackle situation if Ronnie were to once again not be able to get back on the field. Mm -hmm. That's true. And now shifting to the draft. Tyler Lindenbaum, tell us about him. 
Tyler Linderbaum is a very fun watch. And I mean, everyone's seen me publicly on Twitter. If you followed me, I called him not a scheme fit. And I, I, I still sort of believe that because the, the big thing that's going to help Tyler Linderbaum is this offense does have zone concepts installed into it. So a little quick profile on him. He's an elite mover in space. Uh, you know, he, he seriously, there, there are times where he's running outside zone where he'll overlap outside of his garden tackle on the play side because he's so fast. Um, he, he runs, he has a shuttle run, like a, like a running back. Uh, so, you know, his, his ability to move in space, I, I think this could do wonders for the screen game because of how good of a mover he is. Imagine if the Ravens could run a screen again. Wow, oh that'd be god. great. Oh my god. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, that that's kind of what he is as a run blocker, a very, very um, elite mover. And when he gets on guys out in space, he finishes blocks. He's a very aggressive, even at 6'2". Um, in pass protection, very good mover, elite with his hands. Um, people are You're going to hear people talk about his arm length. Uh, question it. It's it's one of the shortest of any first line center taken in the last decade. Doesn't matter. He has black belt certified hands. Looks like you know Mr. Miyagi taught him how to uh, taught him how to refit. You'll see the wax on wax off nonstop. So uh, very exciting in that regard for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I think he's going to be a really good pass protector, and that has the added benefit. If you have a center that you know they're going to give him some inside help against those big noses. You'll see in the AFC North. I have no doubt about that. Um, but he's going to give Lamar a better confidence of, you know, that interior pressure. He, when he loses in pass protection, he only gave up three sacks in his college career. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, crazy. that's in the big 10. Um, so when he does lose, he loses very slowly, um, which, is, which is good. It's a slow burn. Lamar can work off a slow burn better than any quarterback in the AFC or in the AFC in the NFL. Um, so that's obviously very exciting. I think it's going to give him more security. And the big thing that will excite fans, he, that, that Iowa offense, there is some under center, but a lot of shotgun, um, which, you know, the snaps, the snaps are dynamite. So don't worry about the snaps. <laughs> Oh man, you know Ravens fans, we scarred from those snaps, man. Jeez, it's cringy stuff, man. It's cringy stuff. It's rough, man. And of course, I think the most infamous one that everybody remembers the most is in the Bills game, the one that took Lamar out. Um, but hopefully that's in the past now. Uh, and Linda Baum can be our guy of the future. Now, another guy who is for the future. Um, Cause I'm not sure about what his immediate impact is gonna be. Is Daniel Falele the mountain? Yeah, yeah literally, <laughs> literally a mountain. Uh, yeah. Six nine, three eighty. It's hard to find a player comparison because no one is as big <laughs> as him. Uh, that's just the reality. Uh, he's a fun player. I mean, I'm really happy with how they got him, and, and a lot of it depends on Stanley getting back. But if I can get a year with him on the bench, he's got that. That ceiling is. Guys that are his size, you think of the Trent Browns of the world, um, even Orlando Brown Jr. to an extent, um, but he moves better than them, uh, even Orlando. And Orlando was a pretty good mover relative to his size. Um, the big difference between him and OBJ coming out of Oklahoma was Orlando Brown Jr. was such a tactician that like his technical abilities were well advanced to Daniel Falele. Um, so for those that don't know a ton about him, he's uh, out of the University of Minnesota. He went to the IMG Academy for high school. And he was an interesting recruitment case because he wasn't a football player. He was actually a rugby player and a basketball player. He's from Australia. And, you know, I think someone saw him at like a regional combine and IMG was like, we need you. And they just saw his monstrous size and the way he moved. And they're like, we'll teach you how to play football. You bring me skills that I, I can't teach someone to be 6'9", right. 380 in athletic. <laughs> um, there is a clip in the 2019 Penn State game of him running outside zone play side, and he perfectly matches step-for-step step Micah Parsons and drives them. Uh, it's like stuff that he does in space is pretty special um, for his size. I mean, there's more athletic guys out there, uh, but when you consider it in the context of his size, it's special. So. He needs a lot of work in his pass protection, mm -hmm. um, which is going to make fans nervous because anytime we're talking about a mountain of a tackle, mm -hmm. uh, natural leverage comes into play. We saw what happened with Alejandro Villanueva. Um, there's been comparisons made to Villanueva. I think those comparisons where 
in the context of Villanueva as a stealer uh, when he was good. So I rest assured mm. that, and, and here's the difference. Villanueva was 6'9", like Falele is. Falele has 70 pounds on him. Uh, so <laughs> the way Villanueva would welcome guys into his chest and get walked back, oh. a lot harder to do that when there's 70. It's a 70-pound extra slot, uh, slide mm. that the D-line has to push. Uh, but the big thing he needs to improve on he didn't vertical set a lot at uh, at Minnesota. It was a lot of quick sets. They used a lot of play action. Um, mm-hmm. So he didn't have a lot of true pass sets. And you saw some bad clips at the Senior Bowl because the coaches, when you get to the Senior Bowl, I think this is what people don't realize. You're at the Senior Bowl as a job interview, but you're also at the Senior Bowl learning from coaches that are there to coach you to get you ready. Um, mm-hmm. So they're going to ask you to do things that you may not be comfortable doing because you haven't been asked to do them. Mm-hmm. So there's like that that clip of Miage Sanders uh, walking him uh and he's in a vertical set. He didn't vertical set a lot. He's a raw football player. Um, so he needs to develop that ability. But what got me excited is at the combine, he's talking to a reporter and the reporter was straight up like, what's the number one thing you need to work on? And he said, I need to get better in my vertical set. And I was like, this guy's got a chance. Um, he knows what he needs to improve. I think he's going to come into Baltimore and have an opportunity to, to have that space where he's not going to be asked to start immediately where mm-hmm. he can develop. The big thing is, Again, he's athletic. He has pretty fluid hips. Uh, the way Orlando Brown Jr. wins is he's just so masterful in where he reaches a set point, how he deploys his length, and the way he squares guys up. Though You'll see like the Vaughn Miller speed rushers of the world that try and just dip him, and he's so quick to his spot, and he turns his body to square you up. You can't just dip him. He's too, mm. he's too technical. If Daniel Falale can get to that, and I don't know if anyone's seen it. There's an Orlando Brown Jr. retweet of a Daniel Falale clip resonating with what he's doing. Uh, so even Orlando Brown Jr. saw a little uh, Daniel Falale, uh, uh, saw him in Daniel Falale. So that's his path to success. How can he master his pass sets? How can he square guys up? How can he deploy his length and use his size to his advantage? So I'm very excited for this kid. I can't wait to watch him develop. See, and, and when I looked at him, especially him being just like literally a mountain, like you said, that, that was my big concern. Like, how will he do against those speed rushers uh, of the NFL? Um, because obviously the competition, it gets that much more tougher since he's in the big leagues now. Um, but also his coaching will be that much tougher and better since he's being coached by the big leagues now. Um, so that was a, a big concern of mine. But uh, you, you broke it down well. So. After the draft, after free agency, where we sit right now, today is May 3rd. It's about 10, 15 in the morning. How do you feel the Ravens have done for as far as building this wall? How do you feel like they've accomplished it? Do you think that they should be done right here? Or do you think they need another piece or two? How do you feel about the Ravens so far? So the funny thing is, if you had asked me pre-draft, what do the Ravens need to add? I would have said a center and a tackle. And the Ravens went out and added a center and a tackle. <laughs> No so I, I feel good about that. Um, mm-hmm. Tyler Linderbaum, despite being maybe not the best scheme fit, he was still the best center in this draft. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're having, I would have probably preferred they go the JC Treader route. JC Treader hasn't even been rumored to a team. Is he even looking to play? It's kind of a weird situation. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's, they still, they address center in a big way. They got a, one of the top rated prospects to come out in the last five years. Like guys are, if you compare guys from previous draft classes, you'll hear the top analysts out there say Tyler Linderbaum tops them. If if they're able to develop and Tyler Linderbaum gets out there and executes, he has all pro potential. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the exciting part there. And so, you know, they address center in a big way. That kicks Patrick McCary back out to tackle. Um, I know there's a lot of debate out there. Everyone has their opinion. Those opinions are valid. It all depends on how you want to view it. I think he gives them a comfortable, I'll say a comfortable backup option at left tackle. Mm-hmm. I don't think Daniel Falale is going to come in here and start week one at left tackle for you. Um, I'd be nervous about that. If Ronnie Stanley can't get back for week one, I expect that to be Patrick McCary. And I expect him to, he's not going to dominate, but he's not going to be putting Lamar Jackson at risk. So how did the Ravens do? They addressed their offensive line. They brought in three key pieces that one of them is very developmental, but the other two are immediate starters and Morgan Moses and Tyler Linderbaum. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the big thing about Linderbaum and Moses, they have really good durability. 
I Morgan Moses has been the model of durability throughout his career. Um, so, and then you've kind of got a couple lottery tickets too, which is exciting. Like if Jawan James, you, you don't have to rely on him, but if he was able to get healthy and maybe give you something, that's mm -hmm. just an added bonus at this point. Boom. Um, so that's kind of the exciting thing. Uh, I also think in this offense where you, you have the added benefit of Lamar Jackson, what he does to defenders, the way defenders have to read him, it's, it, it always is going to help your tackles. So if Morgan Moses has to do a little bit of work at left tackle, mm. I think you're going to be okay. Like I think they've basically what I think they've done is they've stacked contingency plans at their tackle spots mm. to give them flexibility if injuries arise. And that's what excites me. Perfect. Perfect. And the last question before we get out of here, your starting offensive line with health week one, who would it be? With, with health, Ronnie Stanley left tackle. Mm hmm Ben Cleveland left guard. Oh, okay. Tyler Linderbaum at center. Right. Kevin Seatler, obviously, at, at right guard. And Morgan Moses at right tackle. All right. Perfect. So, Cole, appreciate you a lot for coming on and breaking it down for us. And, again, before you get out of here, let everybody know where they can find you at. Absolutely. At Cole Jackson FB on Twitter and over at the Two Guys Watching Football YouTube channel. Very creative name. <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll link everything in the description just in case y'all get lazy and don't feel like typing everything out you can just go to the description and click on it and it'll take you right there so Cole appreciate you coming on appreciate you coming through as always so, yeah. thanks so much brother